Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Eyes on Earth, a podcast that focuses on our ever-changing planet and on the people from across the United States and the world who use remote sensing to help monitor and study the health and well-being of our planet. I'm your host, Steve Young. Today's guest is Dr. Nima Pallavan, a government contractor and a remote sensing scientist with the Terrestrial Information Systems Lab at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. He's also a member of the Landsat Science Team. Welcome, Dr. Pallavan. Thanks for having me. So you study water quality in coastal and inland waters. Talk a little bit about coastal waters. What are the issues driving concerns about coastal water quality? Uh, that's twofold. Basically, on one side, we have climate change and extreme events like flooding, like significant amount of rain, uh, droughts. And on the other hand, we have human-induced activities like agriculture. Um, we have a lot of overfishing. We have overuse of uh, resources in coastal waters and in- inland. And all these variables together with um, climate change impacts uh, would have impact on the quality of water. They basically together increase the uh, eutrophication in the water, which is a significant problem. It overall changes the ecosystem of the uh, coastal areas and any uh, you know lakes and inland bodies of water. So, I mean, the same issues that drive concerns about coastal water would apply to inland waters as well? Absolutely. So, it's even worse because uh, there are other aspects of usage of uh, inland waters, which is like recreation, tourism, and many other factors. And it's like normally surrounded by people uh, living around it. So, there's all sorts of usage of inland water bodies of water, plus they could be used as water supplies drinking water. So that's even more concern because you have to be careful about what's in the water that human beings uh, tend to um, drink. So how can sensors on a satellite 400 miles or more up in the sky was tell us what's in the water and what these hazards are? From the satellite, uh, what we can see is uh, the material that impact the color of water. And those are basically uh, excessive chlorophyll or phytoplankton in the water, which are tiny, teeny living material in the body of water and they essentially the source of a food chain if there are a lot of them we see a significant greenness in the body of water so that's easily captured in the satellite images so uh, the excessive greenness in the water could allude to a harmful algal bloom uh, situation which should be avoided by decision makers so you're creating water quality products to help decision makers and environmentalists. What are those products and how are they being used? They are basically chlorophyll A products, which is the primary pigment in phytoplankton. These enable you to essentially uh, track changes in the ecosystem. Potential excessive growth of uh, uh, phytoplankton or lack of phytoplankton could also be a problem. So we also can provide sediment, uh, you know, the amount of uh, suspended sediment in the body of water because sediment increases the amount of light that satellite can see from the space. So that's also something that can be derived from satellite measurements. We can also look at Uh, organic matter, uh, dissolved organic matter in particular, that is uh, directly related to dissolved organic carbon, which is a very important parameter in dealing with uh, carbon cycle in endonology. So how deep in the water can you look and why is that important? So first and foremost is the uh, creating bathymetry. Uh, So that's one of the major applications of uh, satellite remote sensing aquatic environments. If there, there are not too many particles in the body of water, uh, or simply put, if there's the water is not quite turbid, then you would be able to see the bottom as long as it's relatively shallow. So it could vary from a meter or half a meter to uh, 20, 30, or 150 meter in, in ocean environments. So that penetration depth varies from uh, body of water to the other one. Um, in coastal water, like in coral reef areas where um, where water is in general um, clear, uh, you would be able to see the bottom because there's not much turbidity and there's not much stuff in the water. So that penetration depth again varies from half a meter to 100, 200 meter in open ocean where water is clear and there's not much stuff in the water. Uh, it's important to, to be able to see the, uh, the, the bottom when you're trying to retrieve bathymetry and you also try to uh, make an assessment of the health of coral reefs. Uh, so those are the areas where you really care whether you can see the bottom. But in, in other areas where you want to look at water quality, 
you know, seeing the bottom could add complexity in terms of how you can estimate the, uh, the quality of water. So it's sometimes you want to see the bottom and sometimes you don't want to see the bottom. So it's a um, situation where you need to understand what you're after. So with a satellite sensor, you could see 150 meters? You can? You yes, can you meter? can. In the open ocean, uh, in, the, in the blue portion of the spectrum, blue, green, 490 nanometer, you would be able to see that deep in the, in the body of water. So the last question is, how might Landsat 9 and future Landsat missions, even other remote sensing platforms, aid in your work going forward? So Landsat 9 is going to be very similar to Landsat 8. Our community essentially will use some of the improved enhancement to Landsat 9. For Landsat 10 and beyond, again, we're hoping that we can help environmentalists and water quality modelers and those decision makers who are after harmful algal bloom forecasting to be able to provide them higher level products like the type of phytoplankton, the phytoplankton species, algal groups, uh, size classes, etc. Those parameters could go into water quality models or HAP forecasting systems, harmful algal bloom. Uh, forecasting systems in the future. Today, we don't have these uh, models, but in 10 years from now, we should have more accurate products. Okay, we've been talking to Dr. Nima Palavan about his work using remote sensing to look at coastal and inland water quality. It's been a wonderful conversation, Dr. Palavan. Thanks again for having me. We hope you come back for the next episode of Eyes on Earth. This podcast is a product of the U.S. Geological Survey Department of the Interior. Thanks for joining us.